I've been talking about Hashirama versus Minito for a long time, an extremely long time. In fact, just recently, my first debate on the topic had its four-year-old birthday, and I've had many more since that one. That being said, I don't care to claim to be an expert at talking about it, but you could probably guess that I've heard any and everything that there really is to say about it. So I want to approach this video from a different angle than I would normally approach a versus battle, where I talk about one character's stats and then how the other character compares in the same stat. Instead, I'm going to give arguments for why each character would win this specific matchup. With that being the case, this video does not have to be watched in chronological order, nor is it meant to be. You can click chapters below and skip to any one of the arguments in here how they would play out. Every section is going to be a different argument and these arguments won't build off of each other, or at least I don't plan on that happening. If it does, I'll be sure to mention it. I can't say I do videos like this often, but I do have a ton of other verses about content you can watch on my channel after this one and more in the future, so consider subscribing if you're interested. We're going to start this off with Minato since in this matchup he is not the favored winner and I think that's because Hashirama regardless of who you think wins in the end simply looks more impressive than Minato and the story in most people's interpretation presents him as stronger. But what if I told you this wasn't always the case though? Back in part 1 there is a few pieces of evidence that suggest at least in the beginning that Minato was meant to be stronger of, if not the strongest among the Hokage. Before I even present the information, I want to let it be known immediately that most of this information is out of date now. Either due to retcons or inconsistencies, most of this stuff isn't true anymore. The first bit here comes from the anime version of the fight between Hashirama and Tobirama versus Hiruzen. After taking a hit directly to the face, Hiruzen claims that Hashirama has the same mighty strength as always. This implies a few things. For one, that at least in the anime originally, the Edo Tensei was not supposed to reduce the power of the person that was summoned. And two, it implies that Hiruzen, who is weaker now as stated, would have been stronger than Hashirama 10 years ago. That will become important in just a bit, just keep a mental note of that. The most common rebuttal to this is that Hiruzen would only know about Hashirama's strength from training or sparring with him, since they obviously wouldn't be enemies meeting on the battlefield. And if that's the case, then Hashirama was probably holding back on him. My main issue with this is just that because they were sparring doesn't mean they couldn't be giving it their all. When the session was happening, of course. Implications for this same thing in the manga are lacking, however. The closest you get to someone even making a statement similar is one of the onlooking Anbu watching the fight, commenting that the battle is a high-level ninjutsu contest, and that this is what it takes to be Hokage. Orochimaru says something similar when it comes to Tobirama summoning a bit of water from just inside his mouth, saying that him being able to do that shows why he was named Hokage. Anyway, how exactly does Minato fit into all of this? According to Jiraiya, everybody paled in comparison to Minato. That should include both himself and Hiruzen at the time, and this was 12 or 13 years ago at that point, when Hiruzen claimed to be able to beat Orochimaru 10 years ago and took a punch from Hashirama in the same battle while he was likely mentally nerfed. Jiraiya's statement is backed up at the end of the manga with the weekly editor's statement from chapter 238, saying that Minato has unparalleled strength and that everyone is setting off to try and get to his level. This stuff makes me think back and wonder if Hiruzen really didn't want that third coffin raised because he didn't want to fight three Hokage or did he just not think he could handle Minato himself. I don't think these two interpretations are mutually exclusive or anything. It could be the case that both of these things are true. He both couldn't handle Minato and couldn't fight all three Hokage. In fact, him not being able to fight Minato or handle him would mean he couldn't fight all three Hokage because Minato would just be there. Anyway, there's the outdated information on why Minato was originally presented as maybe stronger than Hashirama. The scale of power was just different in part one. I mean, they say Tobirama spitting this puddle on the ground is ground for him becoming Hokage. Imagine what these same people would say if they saw Kisame literally turn a desert into a new ocean on the map while he was at 30% of his chakra against Team Guy. Let's talk about a pro Hashirama argument similar to the one we just went over for Minato but simply more updated. Hashirama's portrayal is almost god tier when it comes to Naruto shipping. In some of the early chapters of part 2, Orochimaru claims that Hashirama used wood release to gain total control over the tail beast. Later in Shippuden, Kabuto says that Hashirama's power is seen like a fairy tale and compares him to the Sage of Six Paths in that regard. 
Look at Minato and Hashirama's respective fights for the village. Minato against Obito and Kurama, then look at Hashirama versus Madara and Kurama. Obito might be a bit more difficult to Hashirama to deal with and that's a big might there. But the scale is on two completely different levels. Hashirama and Madara made an entire new landmark with their battle. Minato dealt with two biju bombs from Kurama. Hashirama caught one with his golem hand and deflected one with his Rashomon gates. But that's before Madara showed the ability to rapid fire them like a machine gun. Data Book 3 describes Hashirama as peerless, although this one is a bit outdated since Data Book 4 says him and Madara were equals. Remember when Hashirama made Tobirama calm down when the Edo Hokage were summoned? Well, after he flexed his chakra, Minato was impressed as well. Obviously, being impressed doesn't inherently mean someone else is stronger than you, but it's something to think about. Up against the Ten Tails, Hashirama does a lot more than the other Hokage. He helps with the barrier, but then he adds on his own deity gates to help. He then makes clones to make holes in the barrier to let people attack the Ten Tails, and then he stacks another deity gate on top of that one, which is the strongest one so far. When they're about to fight Jubito, Hashirama once again talks as if he's the strongest, saying, to be blunt, this guy is even stronger than me. That also doesn't have to mean much, but Jubito is also clearly stronger than Minato, and you gotta keep in mind, this argument is all about portrayal. I'm not necessarily trying to prove anything here. All I'm saying here is that Hashirama is kind of portrayed to just be that guy. Minato's ceiling jutsu is the next thing we'll touch on for his arguments. This argument was made mainly because while Minato is in the story a bunch, he doesn't really have any good attack potency feats. Sure, he blows off Obito's arm, but that makes him, what, stronger than Suigetsu, I guess, and a rival for Conan paper bombs? You might be thinking that Minato clashed with Kurama's Biju Bomb in the latest one-shot released in 2023, and while he did, there are circumstances surrounding it that don't make it that simple. For one, the Biju Bomb is incomplete. You can see clearly on the page that the bomb hadn't gotten done forming, meaning it wasn't at max power. And on top of that, Kushina had Kurama wrapped in chains that are known to suppress chakra. Immediately, that stops Minato from getting up to the level of the full power Nine Tails Biju Bomb. Minato does have his fair share of nerfs as well against Kurama, however. Kurama had pierced Minato's chest with his hand at this point, and Kurama's V2 chakra, when he's evil, acts like a poison. On top of that, Minato is inside the mental scape when he lets off his Rasengan, and it's a Rasengan before it's perfected. And probably the most important thing to mention is this is 9 or 10 years before Minato reaches his peak of power. The issue, however, is that Minato is at the very least implied to be weaker than the Sage Mo Naruto. Not only does Pa say that Naruto surpassed his predecessors, Naruto is better at Sage Mode than Minato or Jiraiya and has the Ross and Shuriken on top of that which was already something Minato had never been able to accomplish and Naruto can put Senjutsu Chakra into it now. There is this one statement from the volume summary claiming that Minato has power rivaling the Ross and Shuriken but this is a complete mistranslation. Actually, Calling it a mistranslation implies Viz just somewhat messed up, but no, they completely made up their own summary for this volume instead of what was originally written in Japanese. I'll put the two on screen for you to read if you just want to pause. But the moral of it is Minato is never stated to rival Naruto's Rasen Shuriken. Whether or not you think that was downplay is irrelevant because the statement was simply made up in the first place. I know this is a crazy amount of setup for just one win con, but trust me, the explanations are required. Hashirama doesn't have too great of durability feats on top of Minato's relatively unimpressive showings in the area of attack potency. Hashirama can heal really well, we all know that. He can heal the same way Tsunade can, but he can do it without weaving a single hand sign. And Madara claims this makes him the ultimate shinobi. It might have gone missed by some, but we actually get to see the type of role this played in Madara and Hashirama's last fight while he was alive. Just a bit of clarification here, Mito Uzumaki, Hashirama's wife, became the first Jinchuriki of the Nine Tails during the fight with Hashirama and Madara. Hashirama managed to get Kurama away from Madara in that fight, and when that happened, Mito came and took the Nine Tails into herself. In chapter 568, we get a flashback from Kurama's perspective of all the people who have controlled or possessed him over the years. And here you can see Hashirama saying that he can't let Kurama run wild and he's got a ton of damage on him. 
Since we know this was done during the fight with Madara, it can be concluded that Madara was the one to actually do this damage. And you can see at the end of the fight, Hashirama still has these wounds, they're just healed to some degree. The forehead marking is there, the mark on his cheek is there, the eye that had been beaten shut or closed to prevent blood from going into it, and the marks from that are still there as well. It makes sense Madara would respect Hashirama's healing so much if it kept Madara from being able to put him down, even with the mass amounts of damage he was piling on. Even in the middle of the fight, Hashirama and Madara have this clash and a giant explosion comes from it, and Hashirama is fine on top of his Shinsu Senju. Did he heal it? Did he tank it? I guess we don't know the truth of that, but you see how this is a bit of a problem. The only other time Hashirama even gets hit with something normal in the manga is when he's in Edo Tente and hears him blows up his leg, but we know he's not even close to full power back in part 1, so that doesn't even matter. Like I said, this is a crazy amount of setup for just one Wincon, and just to refresh everyone's mind, we're talking about Minato's ceiling jutsu. Now that we understand why it has to be argued for in place of a Rasengan or something that does actual damage. When it comes to Sealing Jutsu, Minato excels in this category, not only being able to hold back the full power nine tails with the seal, but instantly crafting a seal to separate Obito from Kurama, rebuilding Naruto's eight sign seal with a simple twist of his wrist while being an almost out of chakra ghost, sniping off half of Kurama using the Reaper Dead Seal, and at the same time using it long range where Hiruzen had to get close up, sealing half of Kurama inside of Naruto while being almost out of chakra and on death's door, holding back Kurama while the seal was weakened on Kushina's birthing bed, and being taught the other Uzumaki sealing jutsu by Kushina. Ignoring the feats I just mentioned that are already insane, possessing the Uzumaki sealing jutsu is an insane feat in and of itself because the Uzumaki were hunted to extinction because of how strong their sealing jutsu were. Having this in his arsenal makes Minato a giant threat, especially considering the large volumes of chakra he can seal away with it. The common counter to this is Minato saying it's impossible to seal away such a large volume of chakra in reference to full Kurama, but this argument lacks context. I agree that on its own, this statement can be interpreted that way, but let's look beyond this one page and see if that's true. For one, Minato knows Kurama can be sealed all the way because it was sealed inside of Kushina for most of the time that he had known her. And the second thing, which is probably the most important, Minato has barely any chakra left when he says this, and having less chakra is obviously going to affect your ability to perform jutsu. So can Minato seal away a chakra volume as large as Hashirama's? The answer is a simple yes, he can. For this, we're going to have to compare Hashirama's chakra supply to Kurama's, and doing that is fairly easy. We know that Hashirama has more than, but close to half of Kurama's chakra supply, and we know that because of KCM2 Naruto. After witnessing Naruto share his chakra with the Alliance, Hashirama comments that he has almost as much chakra as he does. A fairly straightforward statement, Hashirama is saying that he has more chakra. While KCM2 Naruto is Naruto plus Kurama, in the war arc KCM2 is mostly Kurama. Naruto already had way less chakra than Kurama anyway, but that doesn't even matter for the point I'm about to make. To quickly jog everyone's memory, Naruto ran out of chakra pretty early into the war. He ran out while he was fighting Obito and the other Biju, but Kurama gives him more chakra, obviously so he doesn't, you know, die. And from then, the rest of the arc, Naruto doesn't have his own chakra. It's always Kurama's chakra. Even during the fight against Sasuke, Kurama says that Naruto's chakra had been long drained since the war. Also, you don't regain chakra quickly in Naruto. When Shinobi run out of chakra, it normally takes them a couple of days or longer to regain the chakra that they lost. That's why Kakashi is bedridden after using the Sharingan for too long, or why Itachi says he needs to rest after using Sukuyomi and Amaterasu in one day. You get the picture. Basically, KCM2 Naruto is almost all Kurama. So Hashirama is just a little bit above half Kurama in terms of chakra, and Minato sealed eight tails of Kurama while being a fading chakra ghost with ease. He held back full Kurama at 15, he sealed half of Kurama inside Naruto while he was almost dead and out of chakra, and he held back full Kurama again on Kushina's birthing bed. 
This last one isn't direct, but Hiruzen tells the other shinobi fighting Kurama to just hold off until Minato gets there. If you think that means Minato was going to come and body slim Kurama and beat him up, then that's fine, but I think it's more likely Hiruzen is waiting for Minato to seal Kurama so that they don't lose the Nine Tails. But anyway, that's how Minato could seal Hashirama. If you're wondering where he's going to seal him, it's possible he just seal him inside himself or summon a scroll to put him in. Sealing someone inside yourself isn't that uncommon in Naruto. Sasuke did it to Orochimaru, and Minato sealed some of both himself and Kushina into Naruto. Funnily enough, Hashirama has a similar sealing argument to Minato. Now, Hashirama doesn't have the type of sealing that can seal you away. He blatantly says he's waiting for other sealing shinobi to do that. But the Deity Gates are a good sealing jutsu. The only problem is that from what we've seen, they probably do require the target to be stationary. He dropped them first on the Ten Tails, who wasn't moving, and the other time he used them was on Madara while he was messed up from Naruto's Rasen Shuriken. The gates do just fall from the sky, it's not like they spawn on the opponent. I could imagine it being hard to pin Minato down, especially since he can teleport, but Hashirama has a seal that makes you lose the will to fight called the head seal. It's still one of the deity gates and granted, although this thing is 0 for 2 on effectiveness, it's against some pretty strong people like the Ten Tails and like Madara who just broke it. I don't imagine you could prove Minato is capable of doing something like that. The next one for Hashirama is kind of crazy, at least in my opinion, but Hashirama has a crazy genjutsu called the Bringer of Darkness. I don't know what Minato's genjutsu resistance level is, so I'm not going to assume he could just get past this jutsu. I mean, Hiruzen knows every jutsu in the leaf and is stated to know 100 genjutsu on top of training Minato's teacher, who likely taught him how to release genjutsu, and Hiruzen still couldn't get out of this one. The genjutsu itself is just set up, however. Hashirama can literally change the battlefield in an instant and litter it with poisonous flowers. And if Minato can't see, I don't know how you'd expect him to get out of this one. You could potentially argue that Minato would just throw a kunai far away and teleport away from the genjutsu, since genjutsu are stated to have a range limit on them. But considering Minato won't be able to see, and Hashirama can cover the entire battlefield in a wood forest, there's no telling if he'd actually be able to pull that off or not. If you take this battle as happening inside the Naruto verse where Minato and Hashirama just started fighting at some random point in time, however, then Minato could definitely get away from Hashirama because he could just teleport to any of the thousands of kunais and markings he has all over the world. I want to thank my buddy Sage for this next win con for Minato. While I don't personally agree with it or think Minato would do it in character, it's certainly interesting enough to talk about. The Flying Raijin Jutsu is actually stated to work via moving through a subspace, and based on the interactions Minato has with the Ten Tails Biju Bomb, we know he can leave things inside of the subspace even after he himself leaves it. Minato teleports the bomb away, throws a kunai, and lands before the bomb comes out at the other location. If Minato can leave things in here, then it should stand in the reason he could do the same thing with people and leave them in here if he wants. But even if he can't do that, he can't just leave people in there forever, then he should be able to, like display with the Biju Bomb, leave them there for at least a little bit before they come out, in which time he can set up a Rasengan or Sealing Jutsu to have it prepared for when they exit. The last one for Hashirama, and likely the most obvious, is simply outlasting Minato. We know that Minato has nowhere near as much chakra as Naruto, and that Naruto, even with Kurama, doesn't come close to Hashirama in terms of chakra amount. Hashirama was able to fight Madara for a total of 24 hours and wasn't even breathing hard at the end of it, so the stamina department, he's probably covered. This is really only an option if you think Minato is too fast for Hashirama to hit, but not fast enough to blitz Hashirama, so Hashirama is essentially just going to fight on the back foot until Minato inevitably runs out of stamina. I have a few issues personally with arguments like this because it mainly comes down to characters just not reasonably fighting like this. I think if Minato and Hashirama fought and Minato was making no progress at all, he'd just stop fighting. But if he doesn't, this is probably what will end up happening. 
This becomes a more likely one kind if Minato decides to teleport away Hashirama's thousand arm statue or his wood golem since those are gigantic and Minato says teleporting away large objects costs him a lot of chakra. So throughout this, I want one thing to become clear. This battle is not the one-sided mess that everyone thinks it is. There are genuinely some decent arguments you could put up for both sides of the debate. And while I think it's obvious to everyone that Hashirama is probably stronger than Minato, that doesn't mean Minato can't pull out a win. And there are tons of examples of this in the series. Kitamaru almost beat Neji while being weaker than him. Rock Lee was stronger than Gara, but still lost in the end. Pain, while being stronger than Jiraiya, literally admits Jiraiya had a chance at beating him. I could go on and on with this, but the end result is essentially that bad matchups exist for people. And at the end of the day, Hashirama is a bad match for Minato in some ways, the same way Minato is a bad match for Hashirama. That being said, this debate is going to come down to what you value more in terms of portrayal of a character versus what they've actually done or theoretically could do. Let me just give a massive example of this that no one can disagree with. I'm sure that everyone agrees 8th gate might guy is stronger than Edo Nagato, right? But if they were to fight, guy would have absolutely no win condition against Nagato and simply run out of chakra from the 8th gate and Nagato would be the winner. Not quite the same as this example since Hashirama does have a win count on Minato, but so does Minato. Anyway, I'm yapping at this point. I think I've made myself clear. And just to be crystal, I think both of the positions on who wins here are valid. If you value portrayal more, then go with Hashirama. If you think Hashirama could never land the win con, but Minato is more plausible, then go Minato. If you liked the video, be sure to leave a like on it and subscribe to the channel. But other than that, have a nice day.